that you're living now, the life that you experience today as well as previously, is a legacy you're leaving behind for those to read from another period of time, from another place, from another perspective. They're going to be looking at you and your life and evaluating it according to how God used your life to minister to others as well as to teach and to talk and to share and to relate those things that God had used in your life. Whether it be of Jesus or of the church or of your ministry to the body of Christ, whether it be in janitorial work, whether it be in serving others, whether it be in Sunday school or in front of a congregation, whether it be in the high and the mighty or behind the scenes never seen as many techies are and many people who work in volunteer ministries. But God sees it all and that's your living legacy that you're living out today which will extend into eternity because the angels themselves are considering well what you're doing today and they are pondering those things that God has done in your life and making inquiry into them to discover what it is about your life that God has chosen you to be the recipient of his grace which was denied them in some ways for judgment shall come upon the angelic beings that are in heaven keep yourselves from idols my son give me thine ear and give me thine heart set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth son of man these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face should I be inquired of all by them? Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupience, concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a sin. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, man of God, flee these things. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. Wherefore your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Lord looks on the heart. I am my mother's son. I reflect a lot of what my mother was and my mother lived and my mother existed during the time that she was here on earth. I have her nose. <laughs> I definitely have her laughter. But I have a lot that was given to me as a legacy or an inheritance from my mother. And though I do not know my father, I mean, you know, I know a little bit about him, but not much, you know. He's somewhere gone. But the point being is that knowing these things, that with which I have been blessed with from my mother, I employ and enjoy that which is the legacy she's given me of the good that there is. And the bad with which she had as a legacy is forgotten for all that she had become at the end of her life outweighed those things that she had done in the beginning of her life her end of her life or the beginning of her eternity was exploded into you could say as a rejoicing of the life that she was given because God had saved her from her sins and made her into a valued witness and a testimony in the ministry of how a person's life could be turned around and used for the glory of God because at the end of her life she was known for her counseling for her ministry in the Word of God by giving out books and tapes of those ministers and ministries that God had placed within her care to share with others in the community freely. And she used her finances and her own personal income to pay for the ministry itself in a downtown storefront location to provide to the community free the Word of God and her just simply working there as a humble woman, humbled by the Lord, her God. And so her legacy lived on in her daughter, in that my sister now does the same that she does, and the same exists, and the legacy goes on. And it shall until the day that the Lord returns. 
For I know, for I committed unto them these faithful sayings and the truths that I had been received of, that freely I had received and freely I had given. So unto my mother likewise I had communicated those ideas and truths because I was saved before she was. And I gave to her of that ministry and she went out for it and caused it to grow and to flourish and passed on to the next generation of my sister. Likewise the same has done that faithfully to this day. And in this day you can go to that place and you can find her faithfully serving the Lord, expecting nothing in return, but giving everything that she has in that respect of the Word of God, of the Calvaries, of the books, of the CDs, of those things that she has now been entrusted with, the oracles of faith, to give unto others that find as a pearl of great price in the field of Klamath Falls that with which she is ministering to the body of Christ in. And I praise the Lord for the legacy that was left behind that God had done to me from Firefighters for Christ when I worked in that type of ministry at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa in the tape lending library before it became or under the covering of the pastors. It was a volunteer ministry. And while it was voluntary, it was amazing. And as it is now today, I'm sure it is still amazing as it's come under word for day, I'm sure, or wherever it's under now. But in that day, I remember the legacy that was passed on and communicated to me by faithful men of God as they too were giving out freely, without cost, and promoting the Word of God without there being any... where I'm different than most people. A lot of people think that your life living is your example. No, it's not. Your life living is a demonstration of grace. That's what it is. What you're teaching, what you're preaching, what you're saying, and your words, oh yes, they are your salvation. Very much so. Because it's not what goes into a man that condemns him, but what comes out of his mouth. Not just the life he's living. So while we have that tendency of Hmong Christians to say, oh, well, walk the talk or talk the walk. That's not what Jesus said. He said, watch what they say and do it, but watch what they do also. So there was a balance there, not just, oh, your life is an example of a believer. No, all of your life is an example of a believer. Your words, your deeds, your attitudes, your actions, your intent, your content, and the portent of what you're saying. You see, there can be that time where God uses you as a mule or as a donkey to speak out those things that God has said, and you're still a donkey. But guess what? you got a chance to warn someone, and God blesses you for it and encourages you. So don't think that you have to be perfect or that you have to perfect yourself in order to be that minister or that ministration of God's Holy Spirit working in someone's life. Oh, no, far from it. God is at work in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure, so he will accomplish what he wants to in you and use you as you do be changed from glory to glory into the image of the incorruptible Son of God. But in the meantime, it's not just the walk, it's also the talk. So don't get confused about the walk and talk metaphors and similes that people are using in some, you know, cliche Christianity that we like to make up from the Bible as opposed to being the Word of God in the Bible. You see, that's where a lot of challenges happen when we get into our contemporary Christianity as opposed to the Word of God biblically. And that's why God uses you personally, individually, to speak to Himself and for Him to speak to you so that you don't get caught in religious fervor but rather in a relationship that dictates to you those oracles or those legacy items that God wants you to accomplish in your life. God doesn't come to you and say, hey, I want you to read the Bible to figure out what you're going to do with your life. God says, I have chosen you and I have numbered every hair on your head. I have a purpose and a design for your life and I knew you before you were born and I knew you before I created the universe. And now I have something in store for you to do. 
If you would choose to follow me, I will accomplish that purpose in you with which I designed you to be. And you will be fulfilled and satisfied with your life. When at the end of your life you're able to look back and say, I have run the race, I have finished the course, there is laid up for me a crown in heaven. For I have done that with which the Lord my God, creator of the universe, has created me to be. Or <laughs> not. And the choice is yours. So the legacy you are isn't the legacy you will be, but what you've been communicated to is those things that God wants you to do. And as He uses you, He chooses you to be that example of a believer. So be thou an example of a believer in all things that you do. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. But he will also speak to you in every circumstance and situation you find yourself in to remove the hindrances from your life. Whether they be of the prosperity that you suddenly come incurred upon, then commit them unto the Lord and ask him to lead you and guide you in that prosperous way he's chosen for you to go. But if he takes you in a more humble way, if he keeps you poor, that he may accomplish more of his riches and glory through you by giving out what you don't have, then he receives greater glory for that with which it was impossible for you to be that ministration of his spirit, except that had not the Lord done it, it would not have been accomplished any other way. Because you see, that's how God operates. He doesn't use the things that are strong, necessarily, to be used of him so that they would receive of course God chose them because of their strength but rather he uses the things that are feeble and weak and about to perish so that it would be the recipient of that honor that God receives for himself when people look at it and say oh it was obviously the Lord God living and alive in that person that caused that accomplished work to be finished because had it not been for the Lord to do it it would not have been done in the first place. And so you see, there's that dependency, that immediacy, that imminency of God living and alive in those who are weak that are made strong in Him. Because it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it is of His Spirit, saith the Lord. And that's what your legacy is, of His Spirit, and not of your own flesh, of His work, and not your own accomplishments. It's of the Lord building the house, else the labor laboreth in vain.